star. One, two, one, two, three. Yay. Yeah, hello. All right. Hey, uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming on. Uh, my name is Mars Stokonaliev. I work for Nokia as a system engineer. And I'm Mark. I work for Ekranis, and uh, I'm here as a freelancer. Yes, so uh, our talk is about OpenStack troubleshooting. Um, this is beginner's guide. Uh, this is important, I think, to distinguish. We are targeting people who have just started with OpenStack and have less than, let's say, six months or less than a year of experience, of experience working with OpenStack. Um, we are going to share our slides. You can see here the link, so you can download slides after or during the presentation at any time. And uh, see, I will try to do it yourself, any scenario. Um, Again, this is beginner's presentation. We will try to share the, some common steps which you can use for troubleshooting uh, a lot of com OpenStack components because they all share the same principles in many cases. Um, we will try to share some useful comments which we found uh, during our experience at operating OpenStack clouds. And we also will try to cover uh, how to get help. That's the most important part, I guess, how, where, and how. Um, for these slides, what we did, we used a DevStack machine, a virtual machine, which you can download yourself at this link. It comes from Upstream Institute. Uh, it's just a DevStack. I'm not sure if you've heard about Upstream Institute, but uh, it's, a very, it's a great initiative by OpenStack Foundation where you can learn how to contribute to Upstream, contribute your code or documentation to OpenStack itself. So it's a one day at every OpenStack or Open Infra Summit now, uh, we have this uh, one or one and a half days exercise where you can learn how to use Git, how to, what kind of commit messages you should use, what kind of exercise, blah, blah, blah. all that stuff which developers like. And if you're not a developer, you can be an operator, whatever. You can still contribute code upstream. So uh, please feel free to join upstream, upstream Institute training. Uh, we are reusing the same virtual machine for our slides and for our exercises. So uh, if you're going to um, download this, make sure that you have enough RAM, enough storage, and all that stuff. Uh, I guess you can continue. Yeah, um, so the question arises, Open, OpenStack is a very old project now. Why at all we need a, a troubleshooting guide? Why are, why are you guys people um, sitting here? Um, because, as we know, software is broken. Unfortunately, the compl complexity, especially in the open, uh, OpenStack world, increases uh, the room for errors. It's a globally distributed project with uh, more than 20 million lines of code. Actually, it's probably more than 30 or 40 million lines of code right now. Just the last year, it was 65,000 commits, um, and it consists more than 60 uh, projects. Uh, the platform itself deployed on hundreds or maybe even thousands of servers um, in your DC, which means there is a horizontal complexity and there are multiple layers of uh, software here, which increases the vertical complexity. I usually like to talk about a little bit this mesh complexity, just meaning that all these services are communicating uh, with each other, not necessarily in an... Um, in a, a layered fashion, but also one-to-one, peer-to-peer, -to -peer, which uh, includes this so-called mesh complexity. And of course, we, uh, we, we are not just deploying OpenStack, but also want to run it and uh, want it to be highly available, which introduces the so-called temporal complexity. So that's why we uh, have to troubleshoot, because for sure, this complexity will introduce errors at one point. I have a basic troubleshooting recipe here. Just go read the operations guide, apply the knowledge, and you're done. And <laughs> bye. <laughs> of course, this is not how it works. Um, when the problem arises, that's already too late. So I, I want you to prepare for it. Know your system to locate the failure, understand all these layers, what, uh, what an OpenStack installation consists of, learn the tools um, that can help you in troubleshooting, even if it's just you know, um, searching um, um, debug messages in a log file or something, and do not be afraid to reach out for help. As you could um, hear um, during the keynotes, it's a very open community, and uh, even if you ask a question which is not necessarily the smartest, no one would frown uh, upon you just be, um, 
just be um, 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 prepared that um, you, can, you can gather all this information from the community easily, but when you go there, prepare yourself uh, with all the um, steps before. The best approach to troubleshooting is to avoid troubles. As Mars already told, uh, um, told you, we we having this um, um, presentation as for beginners, meaning that when someone will look at it, oh, it is easy. I, I do not want to grab logs because I have my monitoring and logging system, the alerting. I have blue-green deployments, and it just works, and so on and so forth. So I understand that this is the perfect world scenario, and I also understand that this just doesn't exist for uh, everyone. And uh, that's why we do not address troubleshooting in this um, um, kind of scenarios. That's why we have this uh, DevStack uh, VM, what you can download from the provided link and actually try out all these uh, troubleshooting steps yourself. So the quick question is, what can go wrong during a VM instantiation? The short answer is everything. Uh, there are so many ways things can go wrong. Uh, we will not be able to cover all of them, of course. We will not be able to cover even the most common one. So what we decided to do, we will just show um, step by step, um, maybe perhaps simplified uh, Nova instance creation flow. Um, it's, it has many steps. Uh, this is just a generic. Uh, we will show you some what can go wrong, what can go wrong at each and every step. But you can refer to this diagram when, whenever you are troubleshooting anything. Um, in general, it's just an interaction between OpenStack components and uh, hypervisor and uh, client utilities. Um, again, this is just for reference. The, the picture uh, might be outdated one day, um, so you can always get a newer version at uh, docs.openstack.org. Um, the basic thing to, you have to understand is uh, how it components interact with each other, and what do they do? And um, do you want to go, yeah. yeah. I guess in the point it It's a scary picture, right? Um, so as you can see, we have 16 steps here. In the presentation slides, all the 16 uh, steps wh where something can go wrong um, um, is documented. When you download it, you can actually read about it. But in this talk right now, because of the uh, shortage of time, we, are, we only cover a couple of those steps. Um, so, first thing, when you, when you go to Horizon uh, or to the um, Open, OpenStack CLI tool and want to create a VM, um, OpenStack Server Create, as you can see, you already face one problem, which is a so-called user error, uh, the missing value of out the URL. Okay, so as a warm-up, we already saw this, we just forgot to configure our credentials. After sourcing the OpenRC, we can actually start uh, creating a server with the nano flavor, with the serious image, with the private network. Let's call it step one, because this is the first step. The error message says that it's failed to discover available identity versions, contacting, parsing, could not find. Wow, that's just very scary what's written there. But um, absolutely no room for panic here, because um, we just need to figure out what happened. So as we can see, the OS out URL was not set up. On the left side, you can see that what, what the problem was. Um, on the right side, how it should be fixed. So if you, if you specify the OS out URL, then our OpenStack CLI tool or Horizon will know that where to um, um, go to authenticate and authorize your user. Then it turns out that my OpenStack.com, where my OpenStack is running, is just not running. As you can see, I used dig and NSLOOKUP, the two um, very easy uh, DNS checker uh, on your Linux distribution, and uh, server can't find um, um, myopenstack.com. Um, we need to fix that. That means still we have a user error, uh, uh, some error on the client side. After fixing it, and we can actually uh, connect myopenstack.com, we can tr try it out. It, the um, address is gonna be 10.15. If we turn it to 10.15 on the 80th port where uh, Horizon is running, we can see that uh, it times out. Then we need to fix that. Probably there is some uh, firewall error and so on and so forth. So these are very specific to um, your environment, obviously. I just wanted to say, um, wanted to tell you that um, just because the OpenStack CLI tool says something, that does not necessarily mean that OpenStack itself is broken. Here, the only problem was that our computer, our laptop, could not connect to OpenStack. Um, then 
if you go on the operator side, so where you actually administer your OpenStack installation and uh, um, it's still not working, maybe because Apache is not even running, then nowadays all the um, operating systems or the, all the um, Linux systems, what we are using, um, ship with uh, systemd. And you, this is how you check um, the status of the Apache service with systemd. Again, as you can see on the left side, it turns out that the Apache was dead and you just restart it and then it's, it's gonna run. Um, and then when we query whether, whether the keystone uh, UWSGI um, endpoint is up, it says no site matches, oh, sorry. It says no sites matches, uh, that means just, it's just not running, so we need to make sure that it's enabled. Here you can see how to do that. We are still on the very first um, slide. What if we, we, we do get scared? What if we are panicking? Um, it, it seems that um, uh, we can reach now the server, everything is running. Sometimes it's good to use uh, dash dash debug with the OpenStack um, uh, uh, CLI tool because then we can uh, get this request ID and with that request ID we can trace back the call chain uh, through all the Microsoft microservices um, um, during instance creation. And on the client side we can check just the request ID and uh, on the server side we can check the logs we can grab for the log what has this actual uh, request ID. If you, if you just uh, go to journal control so that uh, you will list uh, the log of the Keystone service, then it's gonna be a, a lot of messages. Info, warning, error messages, if you enable debug, debug messages, and it's impossible to filter out with your eyes um, um, what you're looking for there. Um, with this request ID, what you can um, um, gather from the uh, client side, you can easily search for all those um, uh, messages, what happened during this request. And as we can see, there is this warning, um, which just tells me that uh, the authorization failed. Most probably, I mistyped my password or something. So. The thing is that that was only one step from that 16, right? That does not mean that uh, um, all the steps can involve so many different problems. But the uh, basic principle is the same. Source your OpenRC, um, check for example your endpoint list, and uh, you can see what, what is the endpoint for the um, um, compute um, service. And then we start to create the OpenStack server, and there is a problem, unknown error, HTTP 503. Well, um, as you can see, this is not really informative. Then you go to the HTTP saturdays.com to check out on 503, and it will just tell you that, yeah, it's some internal server error, so we still have no idea. What are we going to do first? Print the debug log, and uh, there is gonna be much more information. Right now, we are not even interested in the request study because during, the deb um, uh, during printing the debug log, we can find that uh, the, the connection is dropped when we are going to that endpoint. So on the user side, you can check whether we can reach the compute node. 1015 is, it looks like that it not, it's not even reachable. Uh, we cannot ping it. So first you fix that. If you can ping it, then you are fine. You try again the command, does it work? Maybe it does not. So go on the operator side, go on the administrator side, log into your boxes and check it, uh, uh, whether the, the 1015 slash compute slash v2.1, which is the endpoint for uh, Nova, works. And yeah, so what we can see here is some HTML page. It will just tell us that the requested URL slash compute was not found. Why is that? All the OpenStack microservices are running um, an, end, an API endpoint via Apache, via the uh, UWSGI um, wrapper, and as Apache uh, tells us, the requested URL just cannot be found. So why not? Because most probably, some, for some reason, the um, Nova API, the Compute API was disabled. So what you can do is, with ATN site, with the Apache um, site enabler, just re-enable that site, and then um, the same core message, will um, tell you that it works, well, obviously you need to authenticate. Next step on this uh, flowchart is Nova API queries keystone for authentication and authorization of the incoming request. So uh, what happens here is um, Nova API in the background con uh, tries to communicate with keystone. So what happens if it can? 
if it can't. Um, then we have an unexpected API error. Okay, so at least we have some information here where to report this, but actually we can feel that there is more to this. There is, it's not just this API error, something has to happen in the background. Um, again, you go to the operator side and start debugging. Get the request first from the cl client side and then um, grab for that request and then grab for what error happened. And as we can see, um, it's a quite long message here, but um, I put here all the more, uh, important information. There was a discovery failure, which says that we could not find the identity endpoint, and uh, it also, also tells us that uh, the auth URL is maybe not correct. If you check the configuration file of Nova, then there's a lot of uh, um, uh, configuration options on how Nova would communicate to Keystone. Um, the next step, Nova instance creation four, uh, the API checks for conflicts within the database. So after we resolve the problem, Nova API cannot connect to Keystone for whatever reason, um, it might be the case that it cannot uh, connect to the database. You kind of get the gist already, right? Um, most probably there is some connectivity error in between or a, uh, um, or a database user password error uh, and so on and so forth. It's again, the same principles. You are searching for error or warning messages. You can see that there was a DB, a DB connection error. We could not uh, connect to MySQL on the uh, given server. And then it even turns out that uh, uh, the problem was uh, the password, uh, the, the access, uh, was denied, most probably because the username or the password was wrong. So again, what you can do, check the configuration file of uh, Nova, and uh, obviously since this is a Nova database error, you are most probably interested in the database um, section and the A API database configuration option. Um, as a last step, um, in this presentation, I would um, um, show you that it's not just the database, but the message you also can have a problem. This time is, is gonna be a very, very, very long time until it times out and unknown error 503. So again, we are not um, really happy with this uh, debugging information. So again, you go to the server, grab for errors and warnings, and it will tell you that the AMQP server on that address is unreachable. So you most probably just um, um, try test with uh, uh, system the, whether the MQ is up, if it's up, then you um, review your configuration options, uh, even go to the RabbitMQ um, uh, troubleshooting guide, and so on and so forth. I think we will um, um, skip a couple slides now, so that uh, these are the slides what you can uh, um, have a look at at home, and we will go with the instance creation flow nine with Mars. Yes, so uh, one of the, common, the most common errors, uh, I guess we, everyone has seen who has tried to run a virtual machines in OpenStack is a no valid host found, which is a not very helpful message because you don't really know why you couldn't find a valid host. And there can be, of course, there could be multiple, multiple reasons why it couldn't be found. But um, for this exercise, for these slides, what we try to do, we will just show you a simple example. Uh, what, would, what can be happen, what can happen, what could, hap what could be wrong, basically, one of the examples. Um, we are just, we have, I'm not sure if we have a flavor. Well, anyway, you can see the answer here. Uh, whenever we try to create, uh, whenever we try to create a new virtual machine, we have multiple components from the slide number. Well, let me go back. Uh, from this flow. It, we have many, many components and, and inside Nova interacting with each other. And for instance, scheduling, we usually have Nova scheduler. I'm not sure, I don't really see it in the middle. And that's a component which decides uh, which host will be, which compute node or which hypervisor will schedule our uh, uh, virtual machine. In our case, what's happened is, uh, yeah, we'll go back. Step nine. Yes, thank you. What we try to do is we create a virtual machine with a filter, and you can see that when it goes, if you enable filtering in Nova Scheduler filter, you can see right away 
every filter, we have multiple filters, of course, by enabled by default. And you can see by every filter that we have retry filter, uh, we have filtering and waiting. So we have a list of compute nodes passing in and going out after every filter. So if we say we have 10 compute nodes, so it will pass 10. Then RAM filter will filter out hosts which don't have enough RAM to handle this virtual machine. It will return only five hosts back to us. Same for vCPU filters, same for uh, disk filter and other, and NUMA topology, and stuff like that. So you can see in the normal scheduler filter that we have start one and end one. This is our number of compute hosts which we receive and which we uh, basically filter uh, lets out or allows to schedule on. And in our case, it, you can see that it was a disk filter which gets one host and gives us zero. It means there is no host. There are no compute host. And again, this is just for demo. There are no compute host which could host our virtual machine with required disk. And the reason was because we created a flavor with a very big disk. And that was uh, just an example. But again, if you follow the Nova logs or Nova scheduler logs in this time, that's the main uh, output. And just keep in mind another thing, important thing to uh, cover is that uh, this is Nova scheduler. And we in Nova, we have an ongoing effort to go to placement API. And things will change a lot with, uh, in the next Stein release, I guess, uh, train. Uh, when we have a placement API deciding as well um, which resource provider, which host can host this our virtual machine. So we will both scheduler and placement cover, uh, deciding uh, and helping to choosing which compute node will be uh, handling the workload. Um, do you want to cover this? Yeah, uh, just for the sake of completeness, I, I described what is happening on, um, um, on that uh, flow chart. Um, there is one important thing that all the troubleshooting steps for connecting to Glenn, Cinder, and uh, Neutron is similar to that of what we had in uh, NOVA. Um, obviously, NOVA is a little bit different because usually NOVA has uh, um, um, dedicated uh, NOVA compute nodes. Then, obviously, for example, the log searching has to happen on the NOVA compute nodes. Um, there is one more thing. What uh, we haven't mentioned yet is that at the very end, wh why, you, why you are creating a VM with Nova? Because eventually we want to connect to it. So if you cannot connect to, to the VM, the next slide will show you the troubleshooting. I am not going into that right now. But it's basically three main steps at the very beginning. Again, no panic. Check whether the VM was successfully built. You can check it with the uh, uh, Nova server show, or Horizon will um, uh, display to you whether it's in an error or build state. Um, did it get an IP address? Again, you will show it on Horizon, so no problem. And uh, the very important thing, what even after many years of OpenStack administration, I still forget, is the security group configured so that ICMP and SSH uh, uh, ports are open? There's one interesting thing what we uh, promised to include in this talk, and this yes. is how you recover your um, Keystone admin access, Mars. I, 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 so I got this, uh, I had this um, happen to me only once, thankfully not in my, in my OpenStack, but this is how you recover your admin credentials for your, for your Keystone if you completely deleted your OpenRC file and you don't remember the passwords and stuff like that. Um, this is um, because we have full admin access to the Keystone configuration files. We can luckily grab uh, OpenStack, basically the token from the configuration file uh, in keystone.conf, and we can grab, grab our URL from the, same from the same file. If you have these two parameters, you have complete and full access to OpenStack, uh, unrestricted admin access to OpenStack. So it's very important that once you change your password, Please do not use the same uh, token-based authentication. Please do reconfigure your keystone to work different way. But avoid, generally, the recommendation from developers and I guess from everyone is to avoid using token-based authentication because it's uh, not really very secure. And also, protect your keystone.com file and, of course, access to your controller because you can uh, do everything if you have with this if you have these two credentials. These are um, just a very basic scenario, very, very basic troubleshooting. Uh, how do you do, how do you really recover admin access if you accidentally delete OpenRC file? Of course, it's better not to delete it. 
Um, we have general troubleshooting tips and tricks next, I guess. So again, just do not panic. Identify, reproduce the problem. And uh, when you're sure that you actually uh, ran into the problem, so it's not like network connectivity issue from your client to the OpenStack cloud, then start collecting the information. First, on the client side, the client tools, uh, um, uh, what, what version are you using? Uh, what is the environment for it? What is the debugger output? Again, the same in the server side. Uh, what are the tools? What is the configuration of them? What are the logs? Um, the, enable the debug output, and what is that debug output? And then check the environment, because it might be a complete externality. Uh, is the networking working? Uh, operating system is, the, uh, is updated. What are the dependent services? Do you have memory, disk space, and uh, so on and so forth? Fix the trivial issue, if, it, if it's there, like, for example, you mistyped your admin credentials on the spot. Um, if it's a little bit more involved than trivial, then just uh, check it in your uh, um, home lab. And if all of this, you still did not find um, the answer for, for your question, the solution for your problem, then ask for help. Use the web search first, because my, someone else might already um, hit this problem. Reach out to the documentation. Start to, to talk to uh, people on IRC. Uh, talk to your support guys. Talk to developers. If all this is done, be careful with the mitigation because uh, you just do not want to go to one of your uh, production OpenStack uh, uh, setup and uh, start fiddling with config files. So test it first and then mitigate. And what is really important, and I always forget to actually document, because two weeks from now you will hit the same bug and you will have no idea what was the solution for it. So um, here are a couple of tools to use um, um, to collect networking and operating system uh, metric information. Um, there is a very good um, graph of all the tools, what you can use in a Linux system to gather all this information. And at least once check it out so that at least you are familiar with uh, what kind of tooling um, is it at your disposal. Um, the most important thing, though, watch out for the non-OpenStack created issues. For example, when you cannot connect from your laptop to the cloud. There might be uh, resource exhaustion. Your OOM killer um, kicks in because there is um, um, too high memory usage. You ran out of file descriptor limits. Your physical node uh, fails, and so on and so forth. Connectivity is the other very common problem. Uh, maybe it's going to be just an IP address collision. Maybe your switch is down. And, um, Completely inter-DC problems can be uh, arising from time synchronization um, problems or just an external network mix configuration. For example, your DNS or firewalls are not set up properly. Yes. One of the small things to mention is that we have, we used to have, let's say, project-specific CLI tools, and now we have a common OpenStack CLI tool. So, and sometimes, very, very basic question, but what version of OpenStack do you run? And if you want to learn that, want to figure this out, the easiest way is to run this OpenStack dash dash version, and you get the version. And this is if you go to this web page, which has releases for every uh, OpenStack OpenStack component, and the version numbers. And on this web page, you can see that for this OpenStack CLI client, op uh, 3.18 uh, is Stein. So this is a current release, basically. Uh, again, uh, you can use the most recommended command CLI is to use OpenStack, or you can use the older client, you can use Nova or Cinder or Glance or Keystone. Um, if you want to install individual clients, you can install them with pip. Uh, these are the commands with Python. And um, again, if you want, if you can use OpenStack dash dash version or Nova dash dash version, again, you can go here and then to find out the version of your um, components and the OpenStack version in general, like is it Rocky, is it Stein, is it Kilo, or anything like that. Uh, another example, we have exactly pretty much the same scenario we already covered uh, step by step. This is just a uh, same command in a single web page, in a single, uh, I don't know, snippet, um, and different um, stages, let's say. Once you run this command, open text over create, what will happen next? We set up our environment. We parse arguments for the command. We uh, request from uh, we request for the authentication and authorization from Keystone, and we start to request an image. And you, you, you can see all the output where where it goes, what kind of requests there is, uh, what 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 do we what are we looking for, etc. 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 
then request flavor. Uh, one th don't be scared if you see, for example, the response 404 in this case, because what happens is that by default, we, we ask it for flavor M1 nano, uh, nano and uh, by default, it will go to look for ID, flavor ID M1 nano, and of course, there is no such a flavor ID, but after that, it will start searching for flavor name, and it will find it, it's, it's dropped, it, it's not shown here, but it will show you by um, later on, it, it will be successfully created. So this is, this is just an example of what you can achieve and what you can see from a single flag dash dash debug. So if it's really, really important to use it whenever you are feeling that something is broken. A uh, bunch of other commands uh, we can use on a server side and on a client side. Uh, again, if you do want to enable debugging before, it's a good idea. If you don't have it enabled, uh, just set it to true in uh, your configuration files. Uh, these are just like, some examples. For Nova, for example, how to enable debugging. Uh, after that, you have two, basically two options. You either have logging enabled going to journal CTL, or you're going to the var log files. In any case, uh, in journal CTL, it's a bit easier. You can filter out by nanoseconds. You can filter out by timing, let's say by since the last one hour, or last, I don't know, five minutes, or since today. It has, it has a lot of different options filled here, so you can check those options in a systemd.time. If you have, if you not, I don't, I never remember them, so I always go here. So uh, you can either query by in journal or you can query in var log files, your debug messages for OpenStack components. Uh, the most important slide, I guess, from today, maybe, maybe not the most important, but where to search for help. And uh, this is, a lot. there are a lot of places where you can ask for help in OpenStack. And uh, since we are very lucky because it's used by many, many people, and most likely your problem is not unique to you and someone else already faced it and fixed this issue. So uh, try to follow documentation, basically read documentation, try to check for wiki. Not everything is updated on wiki, be careful about it. So check the date when it was last updated. It might not be relevant to your OpenStack release. So check the wiki. You can also read how the certain functionality is supposed to work at the specs.openstack.org. Um, how, how it's supposed to work, how it's supposed, what it's supposed to do, what it's supposed to receive, what it's supposed to output. Uh, you can check if you know how, to, if you, you can check more details. If you know, let's say, to, if you want to interact with developers, you can check a lot more tools on the right with OpenDev and uh, Launchpad and Storyboard. Basically, our old bugs are in Launchpad and our new bugs are in Storyboard. And the same for Blueprints. Uh, the most important three links are these three, is if you are an operator or an OpenStack administrator, uh, askopenstack.org. This is more like a Q&A website. Uh, I don't like, uh, you can ask any question or you can search for help here. It's, uh, it's really, really good. You should try to check it out. We have amazing community on Freenode hashtag OpenStack. Um, if you, you can ask any questions there related to OpenStack. If it's really project specific or component specific, you'll be redirected to a project channel most likely. We have lots of developers hanging out here all, uh, quite, a, quite a lot, quite often. Um, don't be afraid to ask any questions. Don't be afraid to ask any, uh, for help. People are, the community of the open, the best part of OpenStack is OpenStack community. It's all uh, open. We are all trying to do the same thing. We are to, all trying to achieve the same results. So uh, IRC is great. Use it, please. And of course, there is mailing list. You can subscribe at least OpenStack or <coughs> OpenStack Discuss is the main mailing list for everything related to OpenStack and between. Uh, again, you can ask if it's really difficult. You can ask for help there. Uh, try not to abuse it, but there is an etiquette. Where you can read it on that list. I think it's linked here. Uh, but um, you can just subscribe and read messages, what, what's happening right now, what's going to happen next, and stuff like that. 
we also have a bunch of... Yeah, sorry, because we are running out of time. So the most important thing that you gather your, do your homework, uh, gather your logs, uh, your environment, and maybe you will fix during that time your problem. If not, then go to IRC mail exist and so on and so forth. Uh, download our, our um, slides, please. Um, you will have a lot of valuable information there, and uh, you can just check out um, all the links later. And uh, right now we are open for a um, couple minutes for questions, if anyone has any. Otherwise, just take it. <laughs> yep. Yes. Okay. So, sorry. Can you? Can, can you? I'm sorry. Can, yeah, you, can you use microphone, please? We will have to. Have. I'm sorry. I was wondering if you have any general uh, debug suggestions for some of the Apache processes when they start running away with memory, how to track down, um, and how to, how to go and debug that particular um, I would, uh, wait a moment, if you, this is, I'm not sure if you can try to, have you heard, heard before, there's Brandon Gregg who's a god among us, and he has tons of suggestions on how to debug and do profiling of all kind of processes in, in Linux, and, uh, so yes, I would go with tools from this diagram, especially debugging tools. Not only, uh, I don't know, some, something like a trace, but something even deeper. He has tons of different suggestions and he has his own methodology and books on how to debug different kinds of processes. Uh, Apache is a very well used project and program, so I'm not sure um, I can say anything new about here, how to debug it. I guess configuration, um, tracing, Maybe some. Yeah, but uh, um, um, especially this kind of um, um, resource exhaustion, what happened to uh, you, can be easily tracked down by just knowing that there are uh, tools. And at one point, it's going to be uh, one of your basics um, in your tool set that when you SSH into a server, that immediately you, know, you will check the uh, disk and memory and uh, CPU usage. Anyone else? Hey. Well, then. Thank you very much for coming. Thank Please you. download the slides and do not forget to rate us in the OpenStack uh, uh, Summit app. Thank you. Thank you.